time for your daily market dose on Money9. You're watching Corporate Central. How much did the LIC investors benefit from LIC's blockbuster results and what condition did the DGCA put before GoFirst to take off? Why did Reliance Industries put a stop to new recruitments and in which country did Adani Group announce major investment in it? What relief did SpiceJet get from SEBI and all this and lots more on this episode. But first, let's find out what took place in the corporate world today. Reliance Industries is rolling out a cost efficiency drive across its units, Reliance Retail and Reliance Geo Infocom, reducing hiring, reviewing compensation benchmarks and firing underperformers, multiple executives from the company and the wider industry as well. The retail business wants uh, to eliminate the duplication of roles that followed its recent acquisitions, while the telecom, uh, most of its 5G network rollout is complete. Company executives have said that both the divisions have hired over the last year on a very large scale and Reliance Retail and Geo had recruited employees at higher than usual market value and now have been told by the top management to scale down. Meanwhile, those in the lower rung of performance may get retrenched as many as 4,18,000 people are associated with Reliance Retail while Reliance Geo has over 80,000 people. The two companies have slowed down on their recruitment efforts and will only hire on the need basis, reports have added. Aviation regulator DGCA will conduct an audit of GoFirst preparedness before approving the resumption of flights. Cash-strapped GoFirst stopped flying on May 3rd and is undergoing voluntary insolvency resolution proceedings. On Tuesday, a senior official at the DGCA reportedly has said that the airline has submitted its response to the regulator's show cost notice, indicating that it is working on the details of the plan to resume flights at the earliest. Meanwhile, DGCA on Wednesday told the Delhi High Court that it has not rejected but kept in abeyance its decision uh, on aircraft lesser Pembroke aircraft leasing's application for deregistering its aircraft leased to go first. In more news, NCLAT on Wednesday directed three more aircraft lessers of go first to approach NCLT for repossession of aircraft which have been leased to go first. The appellate tribunal has directed Asipiter Investments EOS aviation and ACG aircraft leasing to go to NCLT over repossessing aircrafts. Further, GoFirst owes over 62 uh, crore rupees in dues to 40 airports, Indian as well as international as on April 28th, according to court documents. The airline has made provisions for only up to 39 crore rupees. Though the airline has bank guarantees and advances to support its dues with at least more than half of uh, the said airports, its dues are beyond the bank guarantees and advances. Shares of Adani Group remain in focus due to multiple events. The first is that NSC and BSC have once again put Adani Enterprises, the flagship company of the Adani Group, under ASM framework, that is additional monitoring. The first phase of the ASM framework started from Thursday onwards and under this, the margin for all open positions will be 50% or the existing margin, whichever is higher. The second is that Adani Group is looking for a total investment of $10 billion in Vietnam in the long term. Out of this, $3 billion will be invested by Adani Ports. The third news is that Adani Green has cancelled its board meeting, which was to be held on 24th of May due to unavailability of directors. The meet was to decide fundraising by almost $1 billion by the company. And in another news, GQ, GQG Partners, Abu Dhabi Investment Authority, International Holding Company and Hinduja Group have expressed their desire to invest in the shares of Adani Group of Companies. Adani Group Companies plan to raise up to 29,000 crore rupees through share sale. GHCL has completed the process of spin-off, that is demerger of its spinning business. In fact, the company has got in-principle approval from the exchanges for the listing of shares of GHCL Textile. In April 2023, that is last month itself, the demerger of a GHCL Textile spinning division, GHCL was completed, under which the shares of GHCL Textile were to be listed separately. And now the approval has been received from the exchanges for the listing of the shares of this company. Under the demerger process, the shareholders of GHCL got one share of GHCL Textile in exchange for one share. The board of Shreyas Shipping, a shipping company, approved the proposal for delisting on Wednesday evening, that is 24th of May. The floor price of 292 rupees per share has been fixed for this 
for this delisting process which is 338.75 rupees at a discount of about 14% from the closing price of 338.75 rupees on Wednesday. The company will get full ownership rights and due to which the stock closed with a fall of about 7%. According to the company's promoter, Transworld Group delisting will give them full ownership rights of the company and if this happens, the promoters will get more flexibility at work. Due to the announcement of discussion on the proposal of delisting in the board meeting, the stock had jumped up to 34% in the last two days, that is on the session of Tuesday and Wednesday. And after the decision came and especially after the price came at discount, profit booking became dominant on Wednesday. Narayana Rudalia, the company running the hospital chain, has uh, entered the health insurance business for which the company has received no objection certificate from the insurance regulator IRDA to create a new subsidiary. This week, the company announced its fourth quarter results in which the company's profit increased 2.5 times from 69 crore rupees to 173.2 crore rupees, 855 rupees on Monday, May 22nd and the stock touched a record high of 880.80 rupees on Monday. NCLT on Thursday deferred the hearing of the insolvency plea filed by Aircraft Lesser Air Castle against Spicejet to June 1st. Air Castle had filed a plea over unpaid dues for an order amounting to 49 crore rupees. Earlier this month, NCLT had granted Spicejet a week to reply to the plea by the lesser, which will now be heard on June 1st. In more news on Spicejet, it may get partial relief from SEBI for a preferential allotment to the aircraft lesser Carlisle Aero Group. In an informal guidance letter dated May 23rd, the market's um, regulator has said that the rules around appointing an independent valuer under the issue of capital and disclosure requirements will not be applicable on the allotment to Carlisle. Airline won't have to appoint independent valuer, but Carlisle will need to follow the six-month lock-in. That was all about corporates. Now let's take a look at those market stocks that were in spotlight today and also analyze the reason behind it. First up, shares of Life Insurance Corporation of India saw a jump of up to 4.4% in the opening trade on Thursday. And the reason behind this jump is the bumper profit of the company in the fourth quarter of FY 2023. In quarter four, the company has registered a profit of 13,427.8 crore rupees, which is 466%, that is 5.7 times more than the same quarter last year. The company's net premium income fell 8.4% to 1.31 lakh crore rupees from 1.43 lakh crore rupees. The company's profit has decreased by 10% from 40,431 crore rupees to 36,397 crore rupees in the entire financial year 2023, which includes 27,240 crore rupees of solvency margin money. Now, what did the investors of LIC gain? Despite bumper profits, the company declared a dividend of only 3 rupees per share while investors are facing a loss of 36% on their investment as against the issue price of 949 rupees. Apart from this, there is also news that till Wednesday evening, the value of LIC's investments in seven companies of the Adani Group increased to 44,664 crore rupees, which is 54% more than the recent low of 28,988 crore rupees. And despite a 70% drop in the quarter four profit, Nika shares rallied 2.5%, although the stock is trading down nearly 50% from its 52-week high of 257.17 rupees. The company's profit in quarter four declined by 70% year on year from 7.6 crore rupees to 2.3 crore rupees, despite the fact that during this period, sales have increased by 33.7% from 973.3 crore rupees to 1301.7 crore rupees. Operating profit increased by 84% from 38.4 crore rupees to 70. 0.7 crore rupees and operating margin has also improved. Operating margin increased from 3.94% to 5.43%. In fact, there has been pressure on profits due to increase in expenses and tax payments and the total expenses of the company in the fourth quarter have increased by 36.8% from 3,753 crore rupees to 5,135 crore rupees. Also, the company has paid a tax of 4.35 crore rupees in this quarter, whereas in the same quarter last year, the company had received tax refund of 1.76 crore rupees. 
The stock of Trident Limited, a company related to textile, energy and paper business, has seen a decline of more than 6% on Thursday. The company's profit in quarter 4 declined by 28.4% year-on-year from 181.2 crore rupees to 129.7 crore rupees as income registered a decline. Income went down 5.9% from 1,870 crore rupees to 1,573.2 crore rupees. Working profit down by 20.4% from 337.6 crore rupees to 268.8 crore rupees and the operating margin also broke down. Working margin has come down from 18.1% to 17.1%. Post the results, the company's board has declared a dividend of only 36 paise. Shares of JB Chemicals jumped more than 8% on a Thursday, despite the fact that the company's profit in the fourth quarter increased by only around 3%. In quarter four, the company's profit increased by 3.3% year-on-year to 87.6 crore rupees. And there was a profit of 85 crore rupees in the same period last year. But the company's income has been growing well and at the operating level, results have also shown improvement. The company's income in quarter four has increased by 22% from 624.6 crore rupees to 762.3 crore rupees. Editor, that is working profit of the company, has increased by 31% from 125 crore rupees to 163.6 crore rupees. Working margins have increased from 20% to 21.5%. And talking about the entire year, that is in FY23, the income has increased by 30% from 2,424 crore rupees to 3,149 crore rupees. That's all tonight on Corporate Central. But before we go, leaving you with some important corporate events and triggers which will have the potential to make big market impacts. Globally, impact of US quarter one GDP figures to be felt in the market. And uh, moving on to April, uh, May 26th, results of Grasim, ONGC, Sun Pharma, m and Chumble fertil Fertilizers, Info Edge, Samvardhana, Mother Sun, CUB and BHEL will be out. Board meeting on Capicide Infra results to take place on May 26th and raising capital from QIP or securities to be considered in this meeting. Also, board meeting on results of Inox Wind and Inox Green to be held on May 26th. Dividend along with results and raising capital will also be considered in this meeting. On May 26, Vardhaman Steel shares will trade X bonus, which had earlier announced one is to one bonus. Also, Hong Kong markets to remain closed on May 26, and U.S. consumer expectation data will also be released on May 26. With this, it's a showdown on today's Corporate Central episode. See you again tomorrow with more from the corporate world. But before that. Get all your updates and insights on various other corporate events and also many other uh, market stories in a detailed manner in a newly uh, new avatar of Money9's website. So stay tuned and keep watching Money9.